You know who else loves being free? Ernest Hemingway, the freest American of all. Oh yeah, it's vlog day 659. Morning, it's Sunday, which makes today Mercy Ships Monday and I can't see. Now you can see the Eiffel Tower again. Figured I'd tell you a quick story from my time with Mercy Ships. And then I gotta catch a flight. I'm getting out of here. I'm leaving this delightfully sunny and warm weather to hopefully not freeze. Food. One of the things that you saw a little bit of while I was on the ship, but not really a lot, was the food. Of course, I was obsessed with finding a good shawarma, so I, and I was hanging out with friends leaving the ship. So the food you saw was a little bit of a side snippet going out off the ship to eat. Definitely a fun, fun thing to do. Not something you do every day. I'll, I'll link to the shawarma video, the shawarma hunt video that I made with Karis if you want to see that. Not only is the food the important part, but it's kind of like being institutionalized a little bit because food is served at particular hours every day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, all served at the same time every day. Of course, on the weekends, they don't serve lunch, so you gotta fend for yourself or at least store up enough food from breakfast to keep you going. But food is ultimately a challenge, depending on the country as much as anything, because some countries we went into had great resources. Food comes from two different locations. One is overseas and two is in country. The overseas stuff mostly comes from the Netherlands on refrigerated containers, but those can take a really, really long time to get through customs, and when they do, like was happening in Cameroon, we were there a little bit, it cuts down on your supplies pretty significantly not to be able to get to those containers. Among the issues you have living in country, getting stuff through customs, so that can always be a challenge. And then in countries where you get things like your fresh produce, that can be really delicious, but of course, depend entirely on the status of the country. Some countries we were in had an overwhelming amount of food, like really, really good produce, really great fruit. During mango season, you can get like a ton of mangoes, delicious. And then others, like when we were in Sierra Leone, had very little, if anything. And they would try to fulfill the orders, like they'd actually try to sell us enough, but one of the tricks that got pulled in Sierra Leone was that the guys who were fulfilling the orders early on started putting like a lot of not so great produce in underneath nicer produce just to pass it by. So it got really expensive and really difficult to actually get enough food to feed the crew. So food when you're on the ship can be kind of a tricky thing. The nice thing was my parents would, would actually send me tortilla chips as well and those were always really, really good. I forget what I was gonna say because I'm at the coffee and I want the coffee and that's all I want right now. spent like the last 10 minutes searching for my driver's license because guess who doesn't want to leave that behind again? Whew, I was kind of worried. I wasn't sure where I put it. This is a mess. I mean, it's not a mess. It's a little bit more of a mess now that I've got that. You know what I mean, let's get out of here. Funny story, I just went to trim my beard. Oh, I'll shave everything and uh, I have a trimmer. It's an actual like haircut trimmer that plugs in, it's hardcore, and it's American. And so I have a converter, I've been using it for the last year plus, whatever, here, obviously to trim. Well, I've, there, were, there, were, there have been periods of time where I didn't trim anything, but it's what I usually use to get the head done. She has those combined outlets where it's got the European outlet combined with an American outlet, which makes it look like it's one of those 110, 220s that like can do either or kind of a thing. Yeah, I, 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 I totally fried my, my trimmer and blew a fuse. I didn't blow that, I, I just broke it, and, but everything's fine. It's just, the only thing that's not fine is my, I was gonna show you the trimmer, but it's already packed away again. I've got, it's, it's, it, I've got to clear this space out and, you know, get to the airport. So the thing I was talking about with the, <laughs> that's what I was talking about. It's a really far drop from there. What I was talking about with the Sierra Leonean thing, I'll give you just one example, one good story. I got really distracted by the coffee situation. But getting snacks, getting the kind of good food that you want, you know, you, you kind of starve for it, which is one of the reasons why when I go to the ship, I try to bring a bag full of treats for my friends. I don't think it's quite as bad as when I was there for a lot of reasons, but, uh, you know, friends, they, they miss things, and you can bring them tasty treats, and it's not, a, it's not a bad thing to do. It's a nice way to win people back over if you haven't seen them in a long time. But in Freetown, we, we ran out of food. Like, we were there over the summer. The shipping containers stopped getting through customs. The food wasn't coming in. The city itself couldn't really supply the, the ship with the food that we were looking for. And so we got down to like the bare bones, but they're digging around inside storage and all we had was rice and hot dogs because they had a whole bunch of canned hot dogs that had been down there probably for years. They just kind of like were like, all right, here we go. Maybe not years, but for a long time. 
they started opening these cans of hot dogs and we literally ate canned hot dogs and rice for like two weeks. They made a couple of other things. They made like hot dog pizza and hot dog casserole, but it was basically hot dogs and everything for about two weeks and we called it the rice and hot dog famine of 2011. And those are the kind of situations that sometimes you found yourself in. It isn't the best when you're hot and stressed out and just, you know, working really hard in Freetown or anywhere ever. Eating rice and hot dogs for two weeks anywhere in the world is not what anyone's really looking to do. We survived. I'm grateful we had food. We were all very grateful we had food, but it was nasty, very nasty. Speaking of nasty, I'm running out of time. I gotta get to the airport. I'm going to put all this stuff downstairs, uh, eat something, and um, go to Ireland. Hola. Okay. Oh my gosh. I almost just threw some keys down the elevator shaft. That would have been a bad way to go today. This backpack is really heavy, because all I get is a backpack. I'll show you guys how I pack one of these days, but basically the idea is all you really need is fresh socks and underwear, like one, maybe two spare shirts, and you're good. Got my deodorant, toothpaste, toothbrush, what more do you need? The reason it's extra heavy is because I got my laptop and my drone in there. And the reason I'm carrying this stuff is because I'm gonna wear it when I get to the plane, but it's too hot here to wear it. But I need a sweatshirt and a rain jacket because you know, Ireland. Now, I'm gonna try something new today. Pushan said that the direct bus to Charles de Gaulle from here is no longer running, or at least it doesn't stop here anymore. However, the SNCF app says that it does, and that SNCF app is the only way I'm keeping myself from getting caught in any strikes today. So, let's see if it does run from here or not, and then, oh, we gotta get the metro and are definitely running a little bit late, so let's see how this goes. Pushan is right. They have canceled this stop for no reason, for some reason. Maybe there's reason. I doubt there's a reason. I'm just gonna take the metro because I don't know where the bus stop for this is, where they're suggesting you go to pick it up. So uh, here's hoping that the RERB is running. <laughs> the other hope, of course, is that there are no problems with the whole car rental situation because otherwise it's gonna get really tricky on the other side as well. <laughs> Also not the best sign, hopefully. If everything goes well, I'll just see you in the airport. And if not, well, you know, whatever happens next. Surprisingly painless. And it was a direct train with rum garden. This is amazing. I almost forgot what it was like to get out of Paris in one attempt. Foosball tables, people playing pianos. This terminal is significantly nicer than the other terminals, at least the last one I flew out of. And now to leave the EU. Well, I mean, technically we're staying inside the EU, but going into soon to be non-EU, you know what I mean, we got a we got passport check. Not bad. Anyways, that was also a piece of cake. Now to edit a little bit, fly, and you know, drive for like four hours, that. I'm like looking forward to it, but not looking forward to that at all. Smack dab in the middle, here we go. 40 minutes later, we're going back in for an engineering problem. Sitting on the tarmac for a long time, it's hot out here. They told me I wouldn't need my sunglasses here, but I'm using them anyways. Well, that was easy. Jeez, there's like the lowest security check. Okay, anyways, let's get a car and then just drive because we're already running really late. Long time since I've rented a car. I don't want to get screwed on the whole like there's a little there's one little paint chip on the front that wasn't marked, so we'll see what they say about that. Then we gotta hit the road. Like I gotta find food. I was gonna stop and fly. I don't think I have any time for it. Wait, the steering wheel is in a different place. Well that wasn't what I wanted. Alright, here we go. Left side, left side, left side, left side. I'm not, I'm not gonna film mom. My mom's gonna be very happy because I'm definitely not filming while I'm driving. Not tonight. 
I'll see you when we find dinner, and I'll see you when we're done.